that. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Cameo Podcast. Before I get uh, too deep into things, there's been a few changes uh, with Cameo. I've uh, I've launched my little digital agency coaching, still working out the specifics of it, but I've also launched a Patreon uh, campaign. So if uh, you have a couple bucks to spare and you could forego, you know, buying Starbucks, preferably a local coffee cafe um, one day and, and throw it my way. It helps with ho- hosting this and uh, keeping it going. I've committed to four episodes a month. Um, and then you see extra episodes. Those are going to be brought to you by uh, the, the sponsors, the people who believe in me, uh, the people who understand that uh, I'm not going to change who I am um, to fulfill some sort of narrative. And this next guest, my next guest, he's been doing that for like a decade with his radio show on the X, which is Kamloops' alternative radio station out of the college. My next guest is Jeff Connors yeah. of On the Dope, as well as a, uh, I guess, what, what, what do you consider yourself? Uh, so <clears throat> I consider myself a counselor and health educator. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I, and that's really around trying to do the clinical stuff around um, practice, right? Counseling, trying to help people with uh, mental health and substance use issues, um, relationship stuff, whatever it might be. So you, you um, threw in the word clinical. So let's just, just give a background of like your actual like resume, so people sure, get who sure, you are. Sure, You're not sure. someone I picked up off the street <laughs> who uh, uh, took an online. I'm course. not saying that. Um, I've done both. I've been on the street, and <laughs> I was on the street earlier today, walking up and down. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So my background is, as you said, I did on the dope for a decade at the X. Uh, th- haven't done that for a while. Um, but my background's in social work. I'm a clinical social worker with a master's degree um, and about 20 years of experience counseling in mental health and substance use. Uh, I also work in population health, which is prevention, essentially, upstream stuff, looking at uh, how do we change policies, for example. Um, when you look at drug use, um, you keep, and we talk about stigma a lot in drug use, but until something is uh, decriminalized, it'll always be stigmatized. Uh, similar sexuality, until gay marriage was actually legal, that really started the ball rolling as far as accepting people with same sex. And so uh, so population health is kind of moving upstream, trying to figure out how do we prevent stuff. There, there's this old line about counselors pick people out of the um, water as they're floating downstream and try to help them out. At some point, you got to go upstream and figure out who's throwing them in. Okay. And so that's uh, population health. Oh, interesting. All right. So, yeah, I, I – I was talking with Amy Giddens, yep. and, and, and he used the word community health, right? And, sure. And so population health, community health, yep. you know, they're, they're new terms to me. Yep. But yep. I guess that kind of makes sense. That's kind of what I'm trying to do um, a little bit with this podcast. Yeah. But just to give you some backgrounds, I, uh, I started it actually because I was feeling pretty isolated. I was working yep. seven days a week, um, making good money. Yep. I do not make that money anymore. <laughs> I wish, um, and I fell into a depression. Yep. You know, um, and I told you earlier, they, they also wanted to see if I was bipolar, sure. um, which is a totally fair assessment. And yep. we'll, we'll never really know. We just decided not to go further down that road. Yep. But I remember when you did the Men's Health Week. Yes. T- tell me a little about, bit about that. Um, yeah. Because I think, you know, you can look at Donovan Cavers who cried. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, good for and, him. And, 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 and he he made a joke of it. And I think yep. that's awesome. Yeah. You know, humor is a great way to confront yep. things. Absolutely. Um, but people don't like to admit men have emotions or have mental health issues. You got to throw it under the carpet. And as someone who's been pretty open about that, and, and people are yeah. telling me maybe don't be so open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I tell, and my reaction is fuck off. I'm going to yeah. do what I want. Yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> give me a little bit of insight. Yeah. So, men's health came about as um, as I was, you know, when I was doing my undergrad. I remember once um, asking about. Um, we were doing this piece around poverty in women when they're old. And so I put my hand and figured, so why are um, women mostly poor when they're old? Well, because uh, their husbands are dead. And I thought, shit, that's not a good health outcome. Um, being poor when you're old is not good, but being dead is not any better. <clears throat> and so when I did my master's degree, I focused on men's health partly. And so 2014, I think in Kamloops, uh, us and uh, about three other cities were the first places in Canada to um, uh, pronounce uh, Men's Health Week for the community. Um, so it wasn't so, an initiative you started. It was well. I did it at the same time. Um, uh, at the same time, that Canadian Men's Health Foundation was kind of getting rolling. I didn't really realize that at the time um, because it's not like there was a big network of men out there, and so we're all kind of working our little silos and pockets. And so one of the things in population health is raising awareness, as you talk about. And so one of the ways you do that is simple things like um, doing uh, a Men's Health Week. And so some of the other things we did at the same time were. <clears throat> 
you know, I worked with um, Darcy at uh, Kamloops Women's Resource Center. So one of the first things I did when I started Men's Health in Kamloops is I went to the Women's Resource Center and other places and said, look, this is not a, compress- uh, a competing oppressive discourse. It's not who's got it worse. And it's not us against you. We're all in this together. <clears throat> so how can we support each other? So we did some uh, fundraising and some support through um, uh, Vagina Monologues, uh, through Memory Monologue Rant and a Prayer. Uh, you mentioned Donovan. He was a part of that. There's a bunch of other people in town as well. Um, and just to raise some awareness around that. And after that, we did uh, took those funds and put it into uh, Man of the Month. And it really is trying to just, is there a good guy out there we can promote? So you're doing a good job, right? <clears throat> and from there, we had some other things like the Dudes Club and looking at uh, depression, anxiety, and other things. Um, but you're right. I guess for me, being a man most of my life. Um, most of your life. Most of my life. There's those <laughs> first six weeks in utero, right, where uh, it took my kids a little while to figure out, what do you mean when you used to be a little girl, Dad? <clears throat> uh, it's hard to understand. Um, but the reality is there's not much out there for men. When you, when you look at gendered health, we're talking about women. <clears throat> and there's a whole historical reason for that. But um, the challenge for me is that the health outcomes for men are really shitty. We get the worst end of the stick in all of it. <clears throat> so you look at depression, as you talked about. We're diagnosed with depression at a third of the rate of us women. But we account for 80% of all suicides. Hmm. Currently with the opiate crisis, we're 80% of the, uh, the people dying. <clears throat> when you look at brain injuries, you look at injuries, you look at... Um, unintentional injuries, you look at addictions, you look at spinal cord injuries, you look at all these things, we're on the worst end. We, uh, you know, when you look at social determinants, money is one of the best things to determine good health. And men make about 25% more than women do, on average. But we die almost five years earlier. So something's really out of whack with that. Hmm. And so some of it, I think, is, as you allude to, around feelings. You know, I often joke that men are only allowed to have four feelings. Happy, horny, hungry, and angry. <laughs> we have more, but after about ten, you're not allowed to cry. Right, and so men can't often; they don't often have the language to understand that. Are, are they frustrated or disappointed? Those are different things. But it comes out as angry. So when you score I can men, relate. right, hundred percent. Yeah, and so when you score men on depression, if you ask them if they're angry, that'd be a far better indicator than if they cried. And so, really, just trying to raise awareness. <clears throat> excuse me, Ron. How do we get men healthier? I have a son. Um, I also have a daughter. I've been a man. I've got some buddies. Um, and, and also just looking at equity and gender equality. Um, I think that without men really changing or being allowed to change the, the dialogue so we can be caring people, um, women aren't going to get um, equality either until men start doing more diaper changing and taking care of more traditional feminine roles. Because mm-hmm. as my mom would say, great, feminism has been fantastic for me. So now I get to work also and take care of the home and look sexy, be great in bed and cook a good dinner. Yeah, my poor wife. She's right? having that problem with me right now. And, right. And so, and, and, but part of it is we don't have a lot of good role models around who are these men who cry? Who are the ones who stand to be good dads? But I think right now the generation that's coming is really into that. I see a lot of guys out with, de- with, with their kids and doing other things. And so men's health is really, it's not just about men. It's about the whole community. Totally. Do, do you need to eat or no, whatever? I'll beat? get to that. Don't worry. Awesome. I got kids, so a lot of stuff. Uh, you're, you're used to waiting? different temperatures. <laughs> How old are your kids out of curiosity? Uh, they're beautiful, pain in the ass teenagers, 16 and 14. So you're right in that uh, that place where, mm-hmm. where you, you're in an exciting place, in my opinion, because yeah. like, that generation, they get it. Yep. Yeah. Right? Like, they're, they're a lot of the. Um, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a bigot by any means, right? But I but I grew up in areas and picked up pockets yep. from areas yep. of bigotry. Yep. Let's let's use that. Sure. Right. So I have my preconceived notions, but they're growing up without that, right? It, it just doesn't seem to exist in this generation, especially like when you look at their their musical tastes, right? Like one of their All biggest over. musicians, Lil Peep, was yeah. a bisexual, yep. crazy, yep. interesting cat. Like absolutely, I loved his music, but. Yep. Um, yeah, let's let's talk more about men's health because because you, you touched on an interesting point about gender politics and stuff, right? Yeah. Which is a hot topic right now. Yep. But then you also said earlier, like we're not in competition, right? No. Like it's not a it's not a race of I suffer more than you. No. How do you think Kamloops can try and you know ease the suffering or or what do you think you would like to see Kamloops do? Because we can see what's happening down the road. Yep. With um, Horizon North, who inconvenienced yep. me in the parking. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right, but then you can look at Mission Flash. Right, it's, yep. it's all exciting stuff. Right? Mostly men in those places. Really, is, is that is that just? Do you think there's a reason behind that, or is that just the people who applied? 
I think there's a couple of reasons. One is, um, <clears throat> I like to see the stats. I say mostly, I did well over 50, but um, uh, it'd be interesting for here. But when you look at homelessness, who, who people who sleep rough, they call it, on the streets, primarily men. Um, now, part of that could be because of sex trade for women. Women have boyfriends, in air quotations, that they live with for safety. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so there's some gendered stuff there as well, right? <clears throat> um, but I think when, when you look at kind of what Kamloops can do and what communities can do, <clears throat> I think there's a couple places. One is um, really support men being diverse. Like you said, the younger generation, they're having a hard time, I think, looking at some of the elders going, what are you talking about? Like when my dad comes to town, he's a racist, bigot, um, lovely man, got his significant health issues, but they don't relate to his ideology. Because they grew up with a very diverse culture that they like. <laughs> totally. Quite well, thank you, right? Um, you know, I have this thing that's kind of, I've been looking for a poncho. It's kind of, I guess I found a carnigan, I'm told, or something different. Like but a my, drug rug? Yeah, kind of, you know, I, I want something that's uh, just a shawl kind of thing I throw over. That'd be fun. A um, little bit of gender bending, right? I guess if you okay. grew up in the 80s, uh, anybody who grew up in the 80s with hair metal and the rest of it says they're not gender benders. Um, or, yeah. or have look, a continuum look, look, look of that. A kiss. Like, come on. Don't tell me. Right? Like, <laughs> um, even Metallica That's were kind of, you know, although they're all in black, they're, uh, and they didn't wear makeup. They, they had the hair. And they had the tight pants. They had all that, right? And so I think <clears throat> supporting those folks, you know, I, I think when I talk about men's health, it's really hard to get traction because there's a big empathy gap. Because um, it's, well, men are killing men, so who cares? Well, that's what men do. Boys will be boys. Like, we still have these things out there that we just kind of um, discount, mm-hmm. right, around, well, men are violent. Well, they're not necessarily. There's some good stuff. Robert Sapolsky, uh, he's this primate, neurobiologist kind of guy. He's got this wild hair and beard. If you ever a chance, he's kind of funny. He does some great stuff on chaos theory, too. But he's been studying this uh, troop for a long time in, I don't know, Africa someplace. And, and unfortunately, men have been involved or humans and came in contact. And so the more aggressive ones, historically, they've always said, well, aggressive men, that's kind of nature. Well, what they found was that the aggressive ones kind of uh, got killed off because they came in contact with men, or humans, sorry. Um, and so the ones that were more um, docile, the troop got more docile after that because of social learning. Not hmm. because they got other people got killed necessarily, but because you didn't have to fight. The fighters left. They're killed. So it's like Lord of the Flies should really have a sequel. <laughs> yes. Right? We And, and, and the sequels <laughs> is, is where we're headed because of this. Yeah, but we don't have the support systems and ideology um, to support it. There's a great kind of study I saw back in the day. It was out of um, Ireland or uh, somewhere around there. And there's this great line in, in high school talking about <clears throat> girls. So who, who really irritates in school? The loud mouth guy who's making jokes and is, is peacocking, right? <clears throat> That's the guy who pisses you off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then... Later, so who are you attracted outside of school? The loudmouth peacock guy who's making jokes. So it's a really mixed bag. We want men to be, when you look at why men die in um, um, work situations, because they're doing some pretty scary jobs, right? Uh, not just the farming stuff, but they're doing the, the uh, first responding stuff often. They're the police, they're the army, they're the loggers, they're the miners, they're in, in those places. So we want them there. But we, when they bring those traits, then we tell them those traits aren't cool. And so it's a really mixed bag. Totally. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, and so it's, 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 it's a <coughs> paradox. And, and, and right. I, 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 I'm a total paradox myself. Yeah. Um, and that's a good thing at time. I think we need to support that paradox. Absolutely. That which makes, who wants to live with a bunch of robots? Well, which is why, like, to go back to, like, the new, the, 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 not, not even my generation, sure. the upcoming generation, yep. right? And their use of the internet is, is, is very <coughs> interesting to me. But you could look at the success of Elle Mills. She's a YouTuber out of Ontario. Yep. And she blew up. Yep. And the reason why she is blowing up is because is she is a paradox, right? Yeah. She, she's not mm-hmm. always she's, – she's super confident, but she's also you, – you see her, you know, vulnerable, like yep. extremely vulnerable, yep. right? Like for some reason, you, you – you, and, and I'm, I'm having that trouble right now is, yeah. is people are telling me like, no, no, Nevin, you need to fit into this. This is what right. broadcast is. is. Right. You fit right. into this role. Yes. Yeah. I can't be vulnerable at the yep. same point. And to me, yeah, we talked earlier. It's like, that's my, not my audience. No. I don't care about you. Right. Well, I do. <clears throat> sure. But I don't care about your opinion. I'm just going to shuck it off. Right. Which right. a lot of people also have trouble with. Um, how did you deal with On the Dope? Because is On the Dope, was that 
like a story of yourself, or was that by someone else? Or <laughs> no, no, it was really uh, for you me. Give some background of what on sure the on the dope was, was a, a radio program on CFBX Radio and here in Campbell's Campbell, uh, Campbell's Community Radio Station. <clears throat> and so really, what happened was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was working at uh, the Phoenix Center, which I worked at for almost 15 years, alcohol and drug service place for youth and families. And uh, at the time, there was some extra. Uh, I think they offered an extra day of work, so I was doing four after five. And uh, in discussions with leadership, I said, well, what do you want to do? Is there anything else? I said, well, let's do something fun. Let's do something educational. and Educational, right? So some education, but also entertainment at the same time. Because I think around learning, you learn better when you're laughing and having fun. Like you said, things don't always have to be so serious mm-hmm. to be serious about it. You can have a seriously good time. I, I enjoy what I do, but I'm serious about it. I'll, I'll laugh. But <clears throat> and so I said, well, how about we do a radio show? <coughs> And they said, sure, go ahead. And that lasted about three weeks. And they said, well, that probably doesn't fit well. Um, and I said, okay, that's fine. So I kept going. But the idea was to, a couple things. One, just educate around some diff- differing critical ideas around um, drug and alcohol use, right? So, for example, right now, uh, cannabis has just been legalized mm-hmm. or regulated. <clears throat> so back then, I'd be interviewing people about why isn't it? What's happening? It doesn't kill people. There's a whole bunch of issues. Well, you know, drinking and driving and those things. But, but you can't overdose on it. <clears throat> What about psychedelics, right? What about ayahuasca? What about magic mushrooms? They have some really good therapeutic potential. There's some good history in Canada. So trying to bring some alternate life, uh, alternate ideas around than just, well, you're an addict and that's it, and that's how you're going to be the rest of your life. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't fit with that. And so it was the idea for me really to play and talk to some really smart people. <laughs> Yep. Call him up, say, I have a radio show. Hey, can I talk to you? Yeah, I did like, that with okay, Dr. Sure. Ian Mitchell on the podcast. Right. <clears throat> right. He's one of the last guys I interviewed. And so, um, but it was, so it was a reason for me to do that, but also to bring some of that information to other people, and particularly the eight, you know, 18 to 25 demographic at the college um, who are interested in that critical idea, who could handle that, right? Um, because our industry, uh, the addiction industry, um, really is a conservative industry. It's about you as a person and a failure. Right, it's about shame and blame. That's our treatment modality, largely, right? And I and, and nothing against AA or NA. They've done some wonderful things and do some uh, great stuff with people. Um, but the whole idea that if I go 364 days clean, as I call it, which means I was dirty before, which I have a problem with, um, and then I I have one drink, say it's alcohol, or, or um, sometimes they want you to get off all drugs. It depends what room you're in. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. Some pure stuff is um, draw lines in the sand. I'm back at zero. That motivates me like diarrhea. And so, and totally. I think a lot of other people just don't fit into that. And so, I get I, that. Like, I, 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 as soon as you break <coughs> your, your streak, you're just like, well, what's one more day? Right. What's one more smoke? Yep. Right. So, I'm currently um, trying to smoke less <coughs> cannabis. Um, yep. And I made a promise to my wife that I would smoke only on Wednesdays. Well, that lasted all of <laughs> one week. Right. Right. <clears throat> Next thing you know, I'm up at 6 a.m. <laughs> Smoking, you know, a sativa hybrid, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I've had my doctor and good friends tell me that I'm a little bit less with it at that time, right? But I've also done impairment tests and, and, and other sort of stuff, right? Sure, and I sure. feel good or whatever, sure, be, right? Sure. But in the addictions is industry, how did you? You must have had a lot of people at your back, like coming at you a little bit with that radio show, like, like how did you deal or? or well, because it was on my own, the p- similar as you're talking about, the people that don't want to listen to it didn't listen to it. <laughs> Perfect. Right? And that's fine. Is it, is it like on a podcast now? Like, can you li- yeah, listen you, to it? Yeah, it's on my website. I got like uh, my top five or ten that I thought were fun, right? Nice. Um, yeah, and so for that, it was, um, again, who who's interested would follow that. And, and it was interesting. Once you start talking to people, you know, about some of the evidence and what's happening, they're all like, yeah, yeah, like we're not that concerned about, you know, cannabis, for example, is a drug and alcohol counselor. I can't deal with any more kids. <clears throat> Their parents are at school sending me because they smoke weed and they're 17. Like, I, that's neat, but I don't really care. Um, and, yeah. it's, and it's nothing that I, it's not that I don't care. Just people blow it up to be such a big deal. Totally. And it's not that I think kids should be using drugs at all. But when I would be in a session, <clears throat> I'd say, look, of all the drugs, don't smoke cigarettes. That shit will kill you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, alcohol has some real dangers to it as far as dosage, you overdose, you do really dumb things, really risky behavior, um, but socially acceptable. Yeah, um, I haven't so, touched it since August, actually. <clears throat> right, right. And so I prefer you not to use that. Sexual assaults, for my daughter, I'd, I'd rather her be waking and baking than drinking any day. Uh, she's not going to get raped as easily. <laughs> right? Her thoughts are going to be bit together, the rest of it, right? And, and same as parties like that. And so I'd say I'd prefer you be using cannabis if you're using anything. 
Well, of course, they take that home and tell their parents and everyone else. I, I drug counselor said they should smoke weed. And that wasn't my message. It was just no. if you're going to use anything from a harm reduction standpoint, that's far safer. Totally. Period. And so, you know, then I would say things like, <clears throat> you know, magic mushrooms for depressions could be helpful. That could be really it's hard a 50, to say. It's a 50 one from what I've read. Like, Well, if you have a predisposition towards stuff, yeah. you shouldn't be using it. But that goes if you have a predisposition with a liver damage. You shouldn't be drinking. But that's the thing is you don't know if you have a predisposition. <coughs> like, like to to pull back the curtain, yep. I've used magic mushrooms one and a half times. Yep. One and a half. Yeah. So um, a microdose? Uh, well, kind of. The first time I got given magic mushrooms, yep. it wasn't enough to really do anything except sure. for keep me awake till 5 a.m. Sure. And I got yep. two hours to sleep, had to work the next yep. day. Oh, teach you. Um, and that was when I was uh, doing photo video mm. work at a rafting company. Right. <clears throat> and the guy who gave it to me, unfortunately, he has not been the same for long years because he had a preposition yep. and he is <clears throat> diagnosed uh, clinical skin facilities bipolar. Right, so yep. so when I had this stuff going on, I knew the extremes of how where it could it, go, where it could go, absolutely. Because <clears throat> in his field, he was probably top five percent in talent. Yep. At one point. Yep. And now I don't Struggles. even know, don't even know where where he's at, right? And it, yep. it's horrible, right? And, yep. and and cannabis came into play too because it, yep. it, it yep. Uh, he had an unlimited access to it. Yep. At a certain point yep. when he was trimming, and that pushed him right. It's like, but how do you know, right? <clears throat> you don't ever know with anything. I think that the, <clears throat> you know, I remember talking to my doctor once about, uh, I don't know how old I turned, 30, 40, something like that. And so just give me a head to toe, right? I want all done. What What's happening with me? I want to know, you know, how many drinks I have left, how many steps I have left. And, and he kind of, I said something about preventive medicine. He kind of went off on me, but in a good way, saying, look, don't smoke, don't drink too much, eat well, exercise, do those things. The rest is just bad luck for the most part. Right, as far as getting a disease, when we're talking about flesh eating or other kind of stuff, we mm -hmm. don't know. Mental health, we don't know either. We can surmise some things, given your history, what you know about it, what you don't. Sometimes things come up, right? Yeah. But a lot of it also is environmental, right? So, but we don't talk about that. Again, we put it on you because you got a problem, right? We look at the people that are, you know, we talk about homelessness and the rest of it. Um, look at the kids who have starved over the last 20, 30 years because their parents could not or unable to work. So we put them on a really low welfare rate so they don't get enough nutrition, live in shitty housing, don't have enough support. Their parents are stressed out. They're traumatized. And then they grow up and have mental health disorders. And we blame them. Totally. So there's this balance. And you're right. We don't know. <clears throat> Absolutely, we don't. And so if you have predisposition, you're worried about those kind of stuff, stay away from it. Yeah. The safest thing is always not to use. It's really hard to get pregnant if you don't have sex. There's one person that did I hear once, and it's a neat story. And um, <clears throat> it's uh, yeah, scholars are still you know figuring that one out. Right, right. But I, and and so it's always safer not to. Totally. But at the same time, you know, uh, David Nutt, Professor Nutt of the UK. He's uh, I love his name. He got kicked off of the Privy Council or whatever they have there for uh, mental health and substance use because he said once that um, riding horses is more dangerous than smoking cannabis. Because looking at ER visits, that's absolutely true. So absolutely. he got kicked off. Yeah, uh, my friend, she has had a really bad concussion because she got kicked off her horse. And, like, she couldn't drive for a long time. Like, like she's luckily getting back to it. And then right. her mother ended up having a really bad concussion. And she hasn't worked in a couple of years, right? right? Like, it's craziness, yep. right? Like, yep. but, but, but God forbid, I want to, as an adult, smoke a little bit of weed. Yep. Right, and, and then I'm open about that. And yep. when I shared, I, I recorded a podcast while I was like stoned, <laughs> and I was open about it in yeah. the first thirty seconds. Whatever, my mom did not like that, <laughs> and my dad was the one to rel relay that to me, and he gets it. Yeah, and like, hey, like I'm gonna double down on who I am, but also I don't want people to think I'm just a big stoner because it's really because right. it's really only like fifteen percent of my life. But people right. are now labeling me as a stoner. Right. 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 Similar as do they but say. I call myself a stoner at the same sure, time because sure. I'd rather I'd rather prove them wrong, right, right, and double down on what they want to yep. call me because I've got all this mm. stuff they don't know that I can yep. just destroy them at yep. right. Like it's yep. that's a problem I have with cannabis. I saw your photo um, on Instagram that you went yep. on the store opening day. Opening day. Yep. How was that? 
Uh, it was great for me. Uh, there was nobody there that needed any weed. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, and nobody smoked a joint there, which was fantastic. Um, but again, it, it came to me. I was talking to some of my friends. Um, you know, talking about sexuality, right? And substance use around stigma is no different. Um, you know, I put up a picture, and I know that um, some people are like, "What are you doing? You can't do that. It looks like you're promoting drugs." And so I said, "Well, what about the picture of me with the pride flag the first day gay marriage was available? Is, am I promoting homosexuality?" Right? I'm just wondering, is that what you're saying? Like, there's this binary. You're, you're either a stoner or you're not, right? Are you an alcoholic or not if you have a glass of wine at night? Right? We have these things that we say about people. Um, and, and so my mom, I, I put out the uh, first day non-criminalized weed I've had. My mom's out of my boy, <laughs> right? Um, she's a nurse. Does she really like it? I'm not saying that, but she's yeah. not afraid of wine either. Yeah. Um, you know, she's allergic to shrimp. But she gets it off shady guys in Florida where she lives half the time on a dock with a beard. <laughs> Um, you know, I worry a bit about her. Uh, she doesn't eat too many because her throat might swell up and get too big. But she likes them, so she can have a couple. Right? But we don't look at drugs that way. She dabbles with shrimp. She dabbles. She <laughs> microdoses with them, right? <laughs> um, but, but we don't look at drugs like that. And we don't look at um, other things like that, right? And so I think that's one of the things we need to get away from is this binary around are you using you not. And uh, who cares? What's your behavior like? Yeah. Right. If you're on, you know, I, I see lots of stuff. We don't want people on uh, no drugs and alcohol allowed. Well, no drugs and alcohol. That's like saying uh, no carrots or vegetables. Well, carrots is a vegetable. Alcohol is a drug. <clears throat> what are we talking about? Let's be clear. Drugs are drugs are drugs. And we're drinking coffee right it's now. It's a drug. And period. That's it. Let's talk about dose. Let's talk about set. Let's talk about setting. Right. There's a whole bunch of variables. I think we look at one of my things I get really frustrated in our business about is we look very linear. Right. <clears throat> so we'll do, for example, research on antidepressants. So do SSRIs, we get a bunch of young guys um, in college, which are privileged, no other pre-existing issues. So nothing else going on, okay? Um, then we Your give sample set is, re- is <coughs> messed up from the get. Right, but, but that's how we, that's a gold standard. Then we double-blind study them and see who gets better. That's great to study that one thing. Those people never walk into my office. So they don't exist. So how do we look at multi-dynamic systems and how they influence people? So what does a little bit of caffeine like, or sort of drugs... So what if I have a few beers, smoke a joint, do a bump of cocaine, then how does that affect me? How much nutrition did I have? What's my sleep like? What's the setting? Yeah. A whole different discussion, right? Totally. See, see, like I have this piece of content that I've been sitting on for y- over a year now. Yep. Um, it's on Reddit slash you slash um, runner420. Right. Without an E. Yep. It's R-U-N-N-R 420. Right. And at the time, I was running a lot. I've run two ultra marathons. Oh, good. One with stones. Yep. um, On three hours sleep. Yeah. And that was one of the things like, huh, I did that. Yep. You told me I couldn't. Well, I did. Yep. But they don't realize I actually documented my early days of how I tried using cannabis, using edibles, actually, because then I could actually dose myself, right? You know, for me, personally, you know, 20 milligrams which is quite low yep. for a lot of cannabis users who are much stronger than me. Yep, yep. I'm have a higher tolerance. Li- I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a lightweight. Yep, in all good. Reality. Keep it that way if you can. 20 milligrams can get me 20K. Mm. Right? Like, it's almost it's almost like exactly oh, really, like eh? that. Mm. Right? Neat. And Neat. so, like, I, I actually documented, like, hey, you know, 10 milligrams, which is kind of considered like one beer in yep. cannabis world. Yep. You know. <clears throat> You know, if I do 10 milligrams an hour up to, you know, 50 milligrams, you know, that's a a fun night for me rather than having a six pack of beer, which Lord knows I have trouble with alcohol. (laughs) Right. And that's why I'm I'm staying away from it. And I've gone a full year out of alcohol. And then I went back to it and I wasn't smoking. So I drank a lot like (laughs) I wasn't running. (laughs) Like it's it's this weird dynamic. I have trouble running now because I was always smoking while I was running. (laughs) And, And people can't don't get that idea that you can be a highly energetic and productive member of society while using cannabis um but the problem i have with the with the government weed is a i had anxiety waiting in that line yeah like i, I like i don't get anxiety so yeah. that might have been a byproduct of the vanaxifen i'm on yeah yeah or the experience or whatever it be right um but yeah. i went and bought like just two simple pre-rolls yep and it was like they're 420 each like the cheap ones yeah there's a hundred milligrams of weed in that and by the time, and it's a blunt end. Yep. So by the time you light it, you've already smoked half of it. Yeah. So that's fifty milligrams. That's my whole <laughs> night. Yes. Yep. In five minutes. Yep. Yep. That fucked me up. Yep. 
And yep. that's what people don't get. Yep. Is this understanding of dosage. Absolutely. And how this all works. Yep. Because I imagine there's a lot of people who went there and just like, okay, I'm going to smoke a bowl. Well, how much was in that bowl? And that's what happened in uh, Colorado when you talk about edibles, right? Edibles will come in next year. And so one of the things they did is, and I don't know how this plays out, but it does. People just don't think. Um, so they, they get a big brownie tray and they eat it all. And then go to ER because of overdose. And people go, oh, look, they're overdosing on weed. Well, it's like go and get a 40-pounder the first time you try it and drink it all. Totally. We're educated on alcohol around dosage. Kind of. Cannabis, we're not. And so they, they made this thing called a rookie cookie. Right, so it's one dose, a single one, single beer to see how you how yeah. you play out. You wait two hours. You got to wait two hours, <laughs> right? Because how many people you know take a dose and then wait? Nothing's happening. Half an hour, eat a bunch more. Yeah. Oh shit, nothing's happening. Then they're munching on the last bit and they're going, oh, now I feel it. But and they're over the edge. But they two also hours don't later. know if they if they made themselves <coughs> like, I don't know, maybe they ate a spoonful of <coughs> coconut oil beforehand, yep. put some fats <coughs> in their belly. Yep. Then it then it has the THA has something to bind to. It's fast right? soluble. Yeah. Like they they don't get that right. that side of things because there's a lot of science to it. That, Absolutely, that mm. people don't get. But that's why smoking's good because yeah, it, it's it's easier to gauge. In theory, it's a little bit easier to self regulate. Reminds me of Ativan. Ativan. How- so Ativan, when you have anxiety, you put it underneath your tongue, it's subliminal, and it goes right in your body, it calms you down when you have a panic attack. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of when we're talking about, for example, anxiety. When you look at um, Ian Mitchell has the evidence on this around um. Uh, around kind of the people who, or maybe it was Zach Walsh talking about uh, why people use cannabis. Pain's one, sleep, and it's anxiety and depression after that. Mm-hmm. Self-reported. And so when you have anxiety, it goes to a panic attack. You can take benzodiazepines, some other drugs, which are, um, depending on the dose, they can kill you. Uh, they're very addictive. They have a lot of problems. We don't talk about that, yeah. but that's fine. That's one thing. We'll get to it someday. Um, but so, or you could eat cannabis, right? But that takes a while. And you got to start in the morning, go slow, kind of, you know, Throughout the day, we're smoking it. gives you that hit right away. So shoo, if you're yeah. mad at your partner, go smoke a joint, come back, and talk. Yeah. And, and that's what I was doing for a long time. And my wife, <coughs> she thinks I'm a huge stoner, which, honestly, yep. if you actually calculate how much weed I smoke, I'm really not. But I was self-medicating daily for right. quite a long time. Right. I would come home from work. Sometimes I'd be crying. Sometimes I wouldn't. And I'd immediately walk through the house, not even say hi. And, 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 I'm, and I'm talking, I have a, I have a newborn. Yep. She's yep. seven <coughs> months right now. Nice. I, w- I would walk straight through the house, go to the back, and be in the backyard for two hours by myself smoking weed because that's what I needed. Right. Right? Yep. Did, did I know it at the time? No. Right? But this is something I'm struggling with right now. Um, Adam Mirion of Hexacorp, Hydropocothicary, Kamloops Boy, hopefully going to have him on the uh, – somehow related to Kamloops. Somehow – hopefully going to have him on the podcast one day. Yep. In mm. his Instagram bio, he says sober living or whatever be yep. like – is is it sober living if you use cannabis? Like, can I s- call myself sober? Like, that's 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 something I'm struggling with. Because, like, yesterday I posted I was sober because I didn't smoke weed. Because someone day. asked me, hey, please don't smoke <coughs> in the morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just keep it to your one day and do it at yeah. night. Um, <coughs> totally respect that. Yeah. Um, <sighs> and I'm trying to respect my wife more. <laughs> how it's does never whole, a bad thing respecting it, people more. Yeah. Whoever it is. How, how, do, <coughs> how, how does the sober, like... Can I use the sober label if, 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 if I am a recreational, now a recreational cannabis smoker? Yeah. I, I think that's, <clears throat> again, these value-laden terms. The more we can get rid of them, the better, right? I think the recovery movement um, has done a really good job of kind of getting rid of are you clean and sober or not, right? So you look at AA, for example, where people go in, and, and it, in some rooms it really moves to you can't use alcohol, drugs. And when they talk about alcohol and drugs, they're talking about illegal drugs. But you can smoke tobacco, Right, which kills oh. uh, more people than all the drugs combined. Right, but they don't consider it a drug. Yeah, my, my uncle has been <clears throat> in AA for like a decade, but yeah, he smoked Two cigarettes and <laughs> right. I think he quit smoking cannabis. But <clears throat> his van always smelled like cannabis when I was younger. Right, <laughs> right. But so, for example, if you're diagnosed with, as an alcoholic, um, DSM, you're twice likely to die from uh, tobacco-related causes because we don't treat that. And so, when we talk about being clean and sober, my my challenge is, whatever that is for you, are you healthy and happy? Period. Okay, good. You're not driving, causing problems. The, the, the medication I take when I have a, co- a cough says do not operate heavy machinery at certain doses. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Same as everything else. If you're too tired, you should pull over. Like, And so it, it doesn't change. Uh, once you get to a certain level, that's unhealthy. Let's call it that. Unhealthy, um, you know, substance misuse. Yeah. Right? It's, and it's so almost like we have to apply the Kinsey scale. Yeah. To drugs and alcohol. Right. 
Right. Right? Because we're in this world of black and white, which <laughs> as someone who is admittedly a paradox and it's all possibly it's all bipolar gray. or whatever B, I, I don't think I am anymore, but it's, it's a sliding scale. Yeah, it's a dimmer switch. It's not on or off. We talk about these things. Do you have it or you don't? It's a dimmer switch. How much? What time? How much stress do you have going on other things, right? And so I think about clean and sober. So does that mean I don't take my antidepressants? Because that affects the same neurochemicals as alcohol and drugs do. Totally. So why are we drawing a line in the sand there? We can't because we can say with certain dosages and we can tell better because it's prepared by someone who probably has a PhD and pretty well done. And I know the dose and that stuff. I like that. Yeah. Doctors hate trying to prescribe smoke. They, 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 how do you do that? See, as my, you talked about for see, dosage. My doctor was cool. <coughs> like I, I, I've, I've, I'm very lucky to be a rather new to Camelos, like five, yep. six years or whatever yep. be. <clears throat> and I have a doctor. I lucked out. Yep. Stroke luck. Yeah, yeah. Um, I asked her when Starbuds first opened up mm. if she would <coughs> do yep. that. And yep. she's, she's like, no, you're, A, you're not 25, and it's not blah, 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 blah. Yep. So I did the you know weird Skype interview, and then I've traded that membership card to all these other dispensaries yeah, yeah, around yeah, town, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Which, yeah, yeah. honestly, is a horrible system. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. trading one micro lie into <laughs> other sort of things. Like, like, you know what I mean by micro. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, a yeah. lie, but it's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, what, what's no, going on no. here, right? Yeah. But – I've continued to have that conversation with her, right? And, and I did go clean and sober, yep. 100% no smoke. Yep. Um, and, sh- and the last time I saw her, I had smoked before. And she's like, yeah, you're a little bit dimmer. She did some impairment tests. But she also s- was, like, asking me, uh, like, about my motivation, mm-hmm. right? Because I used to, she used to saw, see when I was super motivated, making a lot yep. of money, and I was yep. go, 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 go. Yep. And, yeah, I had some alcohol problems. But, you know, and that has some weird – I have some weird – backstory <laughs> medical problems yeah. but she actually said like and not even right not right, right in prescription kind of like off the books or thing is like experiment with sativa yep just mm. experiment yep right that's cool yep absolutely because you can see like i'm a little bit brighter a little bit happier and yeah maybe i'm a little bit duller but is is dollar a trade-off for happiness i don't know like, well look at the uh, pharmaceuticals we give people with se- severe mental illness tell me they're really sharp on them on clomazepam Right? They're dull. The reason people leave those meds is because they don't feel anything. Yeah. So that compared to running around with your clothes off downtown, freaking out, is ethically better. Is it best? No. And so I like that because she's in a practice. Mm-hmm. I'm in a private practice. We don't know. We can't say for sure how you're. We've been controlling women's bodies for 50 years with. Um, um, the pill and other uh, things. When my daughter goes in to get it, can they tell her exactly what one's going to get her so she doesn't spot and do other things? No. Go try it. Come back. Tell me how it does. Tell and the me other side of that is like <coughs> I've had a long conversation with a friend mm. who when she got off the pill, mm. a lot of their suicidal thoughts started going away. Right? That's a side effect. Like, but hey, <laughs> you know, see, I would much rather like myself – uh, you know, go on the <laughs> a pill as a man because I think yep. it's our responsibility. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, more, yeah. more than the woman. Yeah, because I think every bit is men have. Um, how do I say this? Men have less going on. It's pretty straight with. pipe. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty straightforward, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So, but you know, obviously the wife wants more kids. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're forty minutes uh, deep, which yep. is awesome. You know, I, I got ten more minutes before yep. I have to run and, and yep. you know yep. well, get you, to my uh, next client. What and, else and you thinking those. about? <laughs> I, I, whatever you want to talk about, is there something we haven't chatted about that uh, um, you want to? You know, so I guess w- one of the things I, I try to pull those two thoughts together on substance use and um, um, men. And so two things. One is I think that um, when we talk with substance users, I mentioned this before we got started, is that often we promote people in this business who uh, have who are unable to use the drug, and so they become experts on addiction because uh, they've had to succumb to sobriety, right? Um, and that's fine, but I have a hard time. I can't think of another industry where, for example, if you did federal time for a domestic assault, would you be an uh, expert in respectful relationships then? <laughs> or would Canada's <laughs> worst driver start a driving school? Like, what other industry does that? But we can't talk about, because of the stigma of drugs, as you talked about the first day of um, uh, legalization or regulation, <clears throat> because it's illegal. If I was to mention that I use an illegal substance, my college of social workers could take my license away. Yeah. Just as if I was gay before, <laughs> that would be risky. So there's a real disconnect. I think the new generation is going to really question that. Why am I going to someone who can't skate telling me they're going to teach me how to be a hockey star? 
and they're an ankle burner. That makes no sense, right? And mm-hmm. so I think we need to think about that. But I think the other thing, as you're talking about with alcohol and, and um, cannabis and men is, I hope a lot of people move laterally to cannabis because it's far safer for them than alcohol, particularly for um, aggression, trying to regulate emotions, other things. It buys them some time to think about how to work better with their mental health and their overall well-being. And so looking at cannabis as a, an adjunct. Yeah. Yeah. My, my thing with, with cannabis is all cannabis is medicinal in one way or another. Whether, whether you believe it or not, I can attest to it. Um, and so I'm very interested in this whole recreational thing, and I'm, I'm watching it very intently. Yep. Um, as a business person, yep. as someone who <coughs> is continuing to use illegal dispensary yep. cannabis, yep. because I walked into this dispensary crying one day. I'm like, give me something to knock me out. Yep. yep. And they handed it to me. And I didn't go there for a long while and because I, I had some – issues with it for a yep. little bit yep. um but i went back there recently and i'm just like hey i'm looking for this this and before i even finished he handed me the right bag and it's great and, right. and the difference <clears throat> i had between that and the government weed right which i just bought on price yep. which or whatever be right yep. like it's night and day this is yep. the guy who saw me at my worst at my lowest yep. like having <clears throat> one of my worst like I, f- I i screamed at the top of my lungs at my boss at the time yep you know, said, you know, I want to fucking kill myself. Yep, yep, yep. You know, all, you in know, a bad is, place. You know, I was a very bad place, right? Like, he should have fired me ten times over. Yep. Um, luckily, I was valuable enough, but that, that's a whole other story. Um, and, yeah, like, I feel for these guys in, the, in this industry, right? Like, they knew what I needed. Yep. Even though, yeah, it was supposed to be recreational. Yep. He passed it off to me, and, 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 and away it go. And, yep. like, yeah, 6 a.m., a little bit of that, like... I feel like I accomplish a lot. Right strain, right dose. Right, exactly. And it's it's really tough. It's really tough, especially because you cannot grow the same plant twice. It's no. actually impossible. Yeah. If, if you do the research from like the yeah. Trichome Institute, yeah. they they try to grow a plant one mile, exact same conditions, same mother, yep. different plant. <clears throat> yep. And these big companies don't get that. Or, or they think you can do it like it's the best they can, the right? Best they can, and that's why craft cannabis. I really want to see it so bad. And I think that's the challenge. Is you know historically we've done things like we've extracted um, THC from and made marinol, and so it's not a whole plant extract. And so it's the combination of that and CBD and a bunch of other things that are really helpful. <coughs> but like you said, it depends on the strain too and what you're looking for. I know people that have used different strains for different things, <coughs> similar as we do with, you know, we worry about kids on on drugs and, and cannabis, right? Yeah. But last year. Was it twenty thousand kids under the age of twelve in Ontario were prescribed Ritalin? That's an amphetamine. Oh, really? So, but so Ritalin, Adderall, and Concerta—all the same kind of thing, right? But what strain, if you're talking cannabis, works? Is it fentanyl? Is it opium? Is it heroin? Is it Dilaudid? Similar but different. Yeah. And so this is no different. We, we've done this stuff for years. We just treat it differently because of the stigma. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like. You can be beer drunk, you can be wine drunk, you can be tequila drunk. Like, like for some reason in alcohol, there's different types of drunk. Yep. White girl wasted, you know, <laughs> blah, yep. blah, 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 blah. Yep. But if you smoke <clears throat> weed, you're obviously a person who sits on the couch and watches Netflix right. and eats Doritos. <clears throat> right. Not the guy who goes out and runs 50K. And I don't know if you've seen stuff. Uh, I saw a good thing on Ross uh, Ribigati or whatever his yeah, name is. And he was vice. talking about, yeah, talking about how, and you see a lot of people do this. It, it really helps them. Be motivated. I know people go for long bike rides, like you said, running and do this. Um, for brain injuries, there's some really good evidence around uh, cannabis helping being uh, Alzheimer's, right? And yeah, and a bunch a of bunch neat of things. And so, but again, does that make it? Should we give Ritalin to everybody who can't um, uh, wake up fast enough? Uh, coffee will probably do for some. Yeah, awesome. Well, uh, we'll leave it there, Jeff. Thanks, buddy. I, I appreciate it. Go. Where can people find you if they want to reach out? And uh, yeah, yeah, you know uh, JeffConnors.ca. Uh, you, yeah, check me out there. They got some web stuff and uh, some of the podcasts you talk about and contact and yeah, it's really uh, that's one spot to start. Perfect. Thanks, awesome. buddy. Thanks you for uh, for meeting with me. I will let him uh, eat his breakfast. <laughs> I'll uh, throw a shout out to uh, Leon Johns, uh, Corey, Hey-o. for letting me uh, hang out and record another podcast here. Uh, great breakfast. Um, I eat here with uh, when I met with Dennis Giesbrecht. Really, really good eggs on toast or whatever that is. <laughs> If I could ask one thing, one thing at all, um, it's, it's just please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If I could ask another thing, please 
consider leaving me an iTunes review. I do want to improve and uh, I do need some feedback. More than just people telling me, don't say this. Uh, more feedback on actual the content of the yeah, could you give it the a conversation or yeah. how you'd like to hear um, or where you'd like to see this go. You know, this has been a project of mine and yes, I am turning it into a business of sorts to monetize, to support myself. But hey, it's still something I want to give to the community and I do need community feedback. Also, please feel free to join the hashtag community Facebook group where I'm trying to create a digital performing arts center for Kamloops. Mm -hmm. I think there's no reason why we can't have a place for, for Kamloops to go and check out all the really cool stuff that people create in one spot. Kind of like uh, Jeff was talking about how there's all these micro pockets of men uh, working on men's health and men's health week came together to collect them all. That's what I'm trying to do for Kamloops uh, in the performing arts side of things. And uh, I've got some big projects and ideas to, to help that move forward. Um, so please uh, stay tuned and reach out if, uh, if you have any questions at all. Uh, yeah, I'm talking more and, and doing more plugs and selling than I normally do, but it's something I need to start doing uh, with this podcast if I'm going to make it, make it so that I can uh, achieve some of my financial goals. One is to actually pay off my student loans one day. <laughs> Anyways, thank you once again for tuning in to Cameo Podcast, and uh, I really appreciate you listening in. Have a great day. Bye-bye.